So it is my true pleasure, oftentimes we say this, but for me it really is tonight, to be able to introduce and uh, give the award to my best friend, Howard Milstein. Uh, <laughs> Howard and I met each other uh, about 50 years ago. We were college roommates. And our other college roommate, by the way, is also at our table. Um, I was told you're supposed to tell a lot of interesting stories, but I won't do that at all. <laughs> um, we're also going to see a video, which is terrific. And the video will give you a lot of the credentials and the details. What I want to do in just a couple of moments is give you some insights into Howard, the man, the friend. Um, and let me start. Some of you may know of Cicero's How to Grow Old, written in 45 BC. Toward the end of Cicero's treatise, How to Grow Old, he says, a good old age is one with respect, one that rests on foundation of a well laid in youth. Howard Milstein, though still young, we are both still young, has spent his life building that foundation. And that's the person that I want you to know a little bit about. He has great courage and insight, amazing spirit. He's really smart. And with all that we all know about healthy aging, Howard's been reinventing himself over the course of the decades. It's something we talk about. He's actually done it. He's gone from the law to business, banking. His most recent enterprise is in golf. <laughs> uh, Jack Nicholas is thanking him for that. Nicholas may be a great golfer, but not such a great businessman. <laughs> um, and his contributions to foundation has gone from health and recently created this uh, insight into what he believes, and I think we all agree, is at the cornerstone of a solid, peaceful world in our 21st century, China and America. And it's, it's a foundation to enable that around, uh, including uh, healthcare and aging. But in order to really understand um, Howard the man, you have to understand where he looks for his heroes and where he looks for his trust. His hero is not the celebrity of great fame. It's his grandfather. And where he puts his trust and his loyalty is in his best friends with his wife, Abby, his son, Michael. And it's those people around him which represent the kind of values that this man brings to his healthy aging. One of the people at our table, Juan, is the caregiver to his mother, was a caregiver to his father. I'm not sure how many people you know who bring their caregivers to an event of any kind. So Howard, it's been an honor, a privilege, it's been love, and it's been fun. And it's your smile that more than anything gets us through every day and defines healthy aging. My father is a gregarious, generous, really charismatic force. He's extremely generous, warm, loving. The best friend anyone could ever want. A person with a huge heart and a profound commitment to philanthropy. You know, my grandfather set a standard for all of our philanthropy, which was to support uh, individuals of excellence in institutions of excellence. Milstein's gift of $7.25 million has enabled the Medical College to establish Abbey and Howard 
P. Milstein Chemistry Core Facility, uh, and it illustrates the enormous generosity of this family, which has played such a major role in medicine and in philanthropy in New York uh, for many decades. It's day after day, that bringing a businessmen's perspective to the appropriate areas of philanthropic endeavor can make a difference, and actually can make a huge difference. You strive to put this venture philanthropy, as you coined it, in practice every day with unrelenting energy through the foundation. Howard's leadership was demonstrated most recently in his chairmanship of the New York State Thruway Authority his private sector experience in construction and large-scale development contributed to a design-build process that saved New York nearly $2 billion from the original cost estimates for rebuilding the Tappan Zee Bridge. And now the bridge is rising in record time, with record savings, and with record efficiencies. Uh, leadership is something in short supply today. Uh, it's something that I've uh, decided that people who are in a position to help must lead. Uh, part of that is the initiative we took some years ago uh, at the Milstein Medical Asian American Partnership Foundation, which brings together uh, many of the philanthropic endeavors that I either chair or participate in. He provides not only funding for, uh, for fellowship training, and also uh, supporting the cutting edge uh, clinical research. Uh, but also he provides his own input uh, how to make this work. The aging population will bring challenges and opportunities to many aspects of society. The vision of our foundation is not only to advance medical research in the United States and China, but also to improve world health by facilitating a bilateral relationship between our two countries. China, of course, has the largest aging population. By 2050, in 31 years, the number of those aged 60 or above will reach nearly 500 million. To help improve senior health for this huge and vulnerable population in China, we have awarded 12 fellowship awards and seven project awards to support the work of exceptional Chinese physicians and scientists demonstrating the vision, drive, and dedication to improving senior health. We have partnered with over 30 prominent American institutions, including Harvard University, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Johns Hopkins University, and more than 30 Chinese institutions. We were all thrilled when Howard was notified that he'd be receiving the Marco Polo Award. It's the highest uh, award given to a non-Chinese person. Howard is one of the great philanthropists of America. His understanding and knowledge is quite remarkable for someone who hasn't had formal training from the bottom up. The bulk of his philanthropic uh, giving are in areas where he can provide leadership and expertise. I love my dad and I'm incredibly grateful for uh, everything he's given me, but also everything he's given the broader community and the world. I love him, I respect him, I honor him, and there is nothing I would not do for him. Howard, I am so proud of you, tonight and always. I love you. Thanks, Mike. So the secret of uh, healthy aging is love. We just discovered that. Uh, so we've known each other for 50 years. That's a long time. Uh, but with the great work of AFAR, which we've all witnessed up close, uh, leading the way uh, on the biology of aging, I guess we've got a few more decades of living and learning together to go.
I want to thank the AFAR board and the entire team for putting together this great evening. And I want to congratulate my co-honoree, Alan Alda. Alan. When Mike and I were at Cornell together with our third roommate, Doug Diamond, who's here as well, we may have spent more time with you, Alan, watching MASH than we spent in the library. <laughs> I'm honored to be sharing uh, this program with you and the stellar researchers who we recognize tonight. This is an exciting time for AFAR. Just a few weeks ago, AFAR was designated to lead the coordinating center of a new clinician scientist aging program. The operative word here is lead. Those of us who are in a position to lead need to do so. As we all know, these are important, there are important government bodies, such as the National Institute of Aging, that are tackling the critical issues of getting older. But it's up to us in the private sector to supplement public funding and enable the research that helps inform public policy. That's why I'm very proud of the recent collaboration on healthy longevity in China between AFAR and our Milstein Medical Asian American Partnership Foundation, or as we call it, our MAP Foundation. MAP recognizes the strategic importance of a solid, productive relationship between the US and China in the 21st century. And what better topic to build on than our, for our two nations than our common interest in the megatrends of aging. Both our societies are growing older, and as we grow older, the issues of aging increase too, spawning new challenges and wonderful opportunities. I salute the work of AFAR, which is tackling both the science and the art of healthy and productive older age. But quality of life hinges on good health. So my wife, Abby, and I have focused our efforts on research in geriatric medicine, dermatology, translational medicine, stem cell research, and regenerative medicine as they apply to the diseases of aging. But we haven't done that by ourselves. We have two eminent partners uh, who we've been working with in improving health, who I'll introduce now. Dr. Gerald Lazarus is co-founder of our MAP Foundation. Jerry. And Dr. Sean Lung is president of our MAP Foundation. Sean is also the AFAR 2006 Beeson Scholar. <laughs> With their leadership, we've published more than 50 scientific papers on aging, spearheaded a national senior health survey in China, contributed to the first of an international series of GERO science symposia along with AFAR, sponsored groundbreaking exchanges between Chinese and American senior health researchers. It seems fitting to close with a quote from John Glenn, the late great senator who was one of the first humans to venture into space and remained productive well into old age. Quote, if there's one thing I've learned in my years on this planet, it's that the happiest and most fulfilled people are those who devoted themselves to something bigger and more profound than merely their own self-interest. If one can combine self-interest with public interest, as in the issue of aging, what a perfect formula to make progress and achieve fulfillment. Or as my hero Winston Churchill once said more concisely, a man makes a living by what he gets, but he makes a life with what he gives. Abby and I have made a life together by doing just that. We look forward to further collaboration with AFAR as the world embarks on what the World Health Organization will declare this coming May as the decade of healthy aging. I will now conclude simply by thanking you for this very great honor so that we can all get home early enough to see some reruns of MASH. <laughs>